with the Behringer TD3 coming in at about $150, an all analog replica of the classic Roland TB303, which goes on the vintage market for about three grand. You gotta wonder, is it worth it? Hi, I'm Zach Mark from Alamo Music here in San Antonio, Texas. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and turn on your notifications. This is a channel where we talk about all things music technology related, vintage synths, new synths, best mics, best interfaces, and try and just keep you up to date with the latest and also do fun topics like, is it worth it? Which we are doing today on the classic Roland TB303. So a little history on the TB303. This was one of three really famous pieces of vintage Roland uh, analog machines and instruments that came out that really spawned a whole genre um, or multiple genres of music. And the TB303, along with the TR808 and the TR909, are three of the most iconic instruments designed by Roland. And it was all the design of one guy, Tadao Kikomoto. I don't know if I said that right. I don't even know if I got, the, especially the last name. I'm sorry. I apologize if I did screw it up. But he was the genius behind all three of those and really almost an analog prophet because all three failed miserably. They were all, well, the 909, not as much so, but the 808 and the 303 were terrible failures. There were only about 10,000 units produced and they didn't sell well and they went and were sold cheaply into pawn shops and um, kind of distributed out um, and considered a failure. Um, but later on were discovered by musicians who then used them to create iconic genres. Um, the 808 with hip hop, um, the 909 with kind of dance music from the late 80s and, and early and 90s. And then the 303 was kind of the counterpart to the 909 in acid, techno, all sorts of uh, electronic music genres from the 80s and 90s. It was the, the sounds in the TB303 are so familiar and so omnipresent in um, the music from that era that it's amazing that uh, these were such a failure when they came out. So it's really funny. Um, I feel bad for Tadao because he must have felt terrible about having invented these and then seeing them flop, but it must be vindicating to kind of look back and see these instruments that you designed have such an impact musically, even though they commercially probably were not a big impact. So the question is, um, these over the years have gone up in price. They're, when I last checked, it was, you know, you can get them between two and three grand, um, partially because there's only, there's only really 10,000 made. And so over time, the prices have gone up. And there have been lots and lots of clones over the years that were made by various uh, companies to kind of replicate this and give people access to it without having to buy the original vintage one. And um, recently, there were two kind of notable ones. The Behringer, about nine months ago, or no, the end of last year, 2019, they announced the TD3, and that's come out for about $150, um, which is an all analog replica of the TB303. And then Roland, I think a year or two ago in their boutique series, did an ACB modeling version. The I think it's the TB03, um, which is kind of Roland's uh, reinvention. And it's a new, it's their, the ACB is their kind of new technology that models uh, the circuitry inside all these classic analog um, drum machines and synths and gives a very accurate kind of emulation, even though it's a digital, um, a digital synth. And, and the boutiques often are, uh, from an interface standpoint, identical or uh, very close to the originals and have a lot of the same functionality. So really interesting time um, with the, the Behringer and, the, and the, the Roland kind of replicas. And so it, with, and the price point on the, the Roland, I think is like a couple hundred bucks, like three, three or 400 bucks, I don't remember off the top of my head. So, you know, it's kind of interesting. You, you're, if you're looking for that sound and you're like, well, I really like that sound and you look at the prices and you're like, oh, is it worth it? So, you know, 
The question is, how accurate are these at replicating the sound in the TB303? And what other things do they offer that may not be present in the TB303 um, originally? So first, a little bit about the TB303 from a use standpoint and a sound standpoint. Um, it's interesting. It's not the most intuitive to program. Um, and in fact, it's totally not intuitive. You have to basically watch a video or read a manual to figure out how to use this thing. It has some, you, you first you program in the pitch. Um, so you program them in your sequence and you have to program the rhythm separately. So very strange. It's not something that you program at the same time. You program it independently, the pitch and the rhythm, as well as um, the accents and the slides. So kind of a strange design. Um, and it it's interesting because it forces you out of your kind of forces you to think about the music in a different way. And um, so it's interesting as a, from a musical standpoint to engage with it because it, uh, it a lot of sequencers, a lot of kind of step sequencers um, and interfaces and modern technology don't work this way at all. So it's interesting, um, it's challenging from a musical standpoint to use one of these. And the TD3 and the TB03 are faithful in their kind of uh, replication of the of the process, the musical process that you use to program one of these. So interesting, um, pro or con, I'm not sure. Uh, it just is what it is. Um, one of the other interesting things is the TB303 is pre-MIDI, so unless you have it retrofitted, there is no MIDI option. It does have a CV and gate, um, so you can, and it does also have a sync, so you can sync it with other um, instruments from the time and use converters to do various things. Um, but there are uh, lots of retrofit kits that are available to add uh, MIDI as well as a couple other common um, kind of uh, features uh, that were not present originally, tone tone modifications and whatnot. So there's a, there's a bunch of those available. Um, interestingly enough, the TD3 and the TB03 add a distortion effect. And I think that TB03 has a delay effect that, that are added onto it, in which were very common kind of effects used with the TB303 to, um, to help sculpt the sound. So very kind of common to find distortion um, as an effect that was used with, in songs using the TB303. So both of Roland and Behringer included it in the actual um, synth itself. So. Um, very, very interesting piece. Um, I think we're going to listen to all three some, side by side. So it's interesting that TD3 to me, they all sound, both of them sound very close to the TB303. Um, the TD3 from Behringer sounds different. It's an all ana analog replica. And it also, um, it also kind of has the, the plastic, this, the TB303 is actually really light. It feels cheap. <laughs> I think originally when it was released, it was a couple hundred bucks, and it, it the componentry in here is not terribly complex. And the the TD3 is uh, kind of pays homage to that in that it's not it's not super heavy. It doesn't feel super sturdy. It it feels inexpensive, um, and it is inexpensive. Um, the TB03 actually is heavier and feels more more kind of sturdy than the TB303. So it actually, it kind of almost feels, it feels more expensive. It is more expensive. Um, I think that's really interesting about the boutiques is that they do a really, really, really good job of getting you the same kind of tone of the um, classic analog versions. It is, it tends to be a little brighter. It tends to be uh, just, it's, as it's digital, it's, it's a little bit more in your face um, than the kind of classic warm analog tones that you find in these classic instruments, which it can be a pro or a con. Um, I think when you're mixing and when you're mastering, you can kind of hide a lot of that. And also, you know, for most, if, if the track is complex in any way, sometimes it's better to have a, a, v, uh, a virtual instrument or uh, the TB03 tonal palette if you're using mostly digital, um, most of the other instruments are digital. You know, if you're not using all analog, it doesn't necessarily make it easier to mix when you're using a classic analog um, synth with other digital instruments. So you can really hide the fact that it's digital or analog with mixing and mastering. So 
You know, I think both of these are great options for um, for not having to spend three thousand dollars to own one of these. Uh, if you're more interested in an analog pure, if you're pure analog tone, I would say the TD3 is probably a better option. Uh, if you're interested in more accurate tone um, for the TB303, I would actually recommend the TB03 or the VST, the Roland Cloud software. I think it models it a little more accurately than the Behringer. But the Behringer is more true to form in that it's analog and that it's and it's kind of dis, almost disposable nature. You know, it's 150 bucks. You could buy two or three of them. And I, I've read online people buying multiple and kind of chaining them and doing interesting things. So personally, I think the TB303, unless you're a collector, it's probably not a great idea to shell out three grand, two or three grand. They don't feel to me, they don't feel incredibly stable. Um, and, you know, they are, are like sturdy. It's, it's kind of a, it's from the era where Roland used a lot more, lot, lot more plastic and, you know, prone to break. I, you know, unless you're really interested in owning a piece of history and kind of collecting, I think $3,000 is way overblown for, um, for its musical intents and purposes. Um, I do think it's awesome. I do think it looks really cool and it is always fun playing with a vintage piece of equipment, but, you know, spending two or three grand, that really is I would say just for the collector's value, you know, only 10,000 were made, it kind of makes sense. But from a musical standpoint, I think one of these clones or um, one of the many other clones that are out there are going to work for all intents and purposes um, for most most people. So that's my, my take. Let's listen to all three and kind of see, and then we'll get some feedback on what you think. So here we go. Thank <laughs> you. 
So I hope you can hear how the TD3 and the TB03 sound very similar to the TB303. You know, it's not exact. I won't tell you that it's an exact one-for-one -one emulation, but a TB303, if you take two of them and you play them side by side, they wouldn't be exact emulations of each other because they're analog, because they've aged, the circuitry is different given their histories. These are very, these are 40 plus year old instruments and so there is no kind of pure TB303 sound that any instrument could totally replicate. So I personally think these do a great job of giving you that kind of TB303 sound and I also think that it isn't worth it. You shouldn't spend $3,000 on a TB303 just to have it as a musical tool. If you want to invest in it as a collector, you know, I can't argue with that. That that makes sense. There's only 10,000 created. If you want a part of history, that makes sense. But from a musical standpoint, buy all 10 clones for $3,000 that are that have been made of the TB303 and you'll have 10 different imagined versions of this pure TB303 sound that really probably doesn't exist. Again, I could be wrong. Please disagree with me. I'd write a comment below if I left any facts out. I'd love to hear those corrections down below. And if you haven't, please hit the subscribe button. We're going to be doing more videos on topics like is it worth it or synths and drum machines that time forgot. And also modern kind of reviews of new analog and digital synths coming out as well as mics and interfaces and all that jazz. So again, I'm Zach Marr from Alamo Music here in San Antonio, Texas. And if you haven't, you can visit our website, chat us, you know, uh, you can write us at your friends at alamomusic.com. We'd love to hear from you. But yeah, until next time, thanks for listening.